Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. And the next speaker is from the same team. Uh, so far, all of you would have seen the regular format of a classroom uh, in the last maybe 100 years. A teacher comes to a class, teaches, and uh, you as students just take notes, go back and do your homework or whatever. So we are talking about how to use technology in classrooms, how to bring about a change, how do you use technology outside the classroom or within the classroom, and also how technology can connect you as students and help you learn more. Anandan thought that Research Connector um, Siddharth will not be talking, but he is going to talk about it. Okay, thanks, Vidya. So actually, I don't really need to do a talk on Meg because half of it was covered by Anandan and the other half of the video. But even then, uh, for the next 15-20 uh, minutes, I'll keep it short because I know you guys are getting restless and you've been sitting in this room for a while. So I'll keep it really short. And uh, I will talk about two initiatives that actually really matter to you. So since morning, I'm sure uh, after hearing to all these speakers, many of you must have been inspired and you must be thinking, that, all right, I mean, now we know these research talks and subjects. How can we really connect with this kind of research and what can we do to participate, uh, you know, actively uh, to be part of the ecosystem and figure out if we want to pursue a career in research or not? So, uh, before I actually jump into the two uh, topics, uh, I will tell you something very interesting that uh, we really figured out very recently. So, while we were preparing this talk uh, with the help of my colleagues here as well, uh, we thought that uh, since both of these initiatives are online, it may be very interesting to know and find out if there have been studies and surveys around this particular question. How many hours do students spend online every day? So what do you think? How many hours do you spend online every day? One hour. For sure not one hour. 24 hours. Okay, all right. Good, exactly. So this is the same amount of confusion we had as well. So we went online, did some search, and uh, what we found was something like this. So do you see the spike there? That is where most of you belong, right? <laughs> so it is, it is surprising. And, and what is more interesting is that line, five plus hours every day. So when it comes to taking practical exams in your classrooms and labs, then you don't have internet. But when it comes to doing stuff on the internet, you spend five plus hours every day. Now obviously, this led to another very interesting question, a very you know, obvious question that we were very interested in finding out. And that question was, all right, you spend five plus hours every day. What do you really do on the internet you know, for five plus hours on the internet? So obviously, the list was long. And obviously, all of you are smiling. So I know. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to expose any of you. I will, I will <laughs> keep it, uh, you know, undercover. But then the first, I mean, okay, let's start from three. So according to you, what do you think is the third most popular thing that students do online? Take a guess. Louder, louder. I know you have not got lunch. You will get lunch. You can be louder. Social networking, all right. Okay, let's see what do I have. So the third most popular thing, by the way, before I uh, put out these facts and figures, I've taken all of these facts and figures from quality school rankings who actually conducted a survey last year. And they did the survey specially for students in India because you know a lot of students actually keep on saying that internet is a problem and so on and so forth. So the third most popular thing that students do is watching videos online. The second one. So this is Skype, because obviously it's a Microsoft event. But people spend time chatting. So the point is that these five plus hours go in doing these two things in that order. Now what do you think is the most popular thing that students do? OK, you're right. 
Oops, what's that? Okay. So by the way, this person is somewhere in the crowd. So uh, the contest cards you have, just find out who the person is, write the at answer as well, okay? So that's, that's actually fascinating, right? So five plus hours every day doing these kind of things. Then before investigating, do students actually study also online? So how many of you study online? Really? What do you study? Coursera, okay. Coursera. Who said Coursera? What course do you study on Coursera? Okay, think I'll ask you after half an hour. <laughs> All right. Cool. So, interestingly, a lot of these courses are available online, like Coursera, edX, Edacity. I will not spend time in explaining what these courses are, because I'm sure you don't know, so you would want to know. So, <laughs> what we really try to investigate is, if these things are available online, where does you know, studying online actually figure on the list? So finally, somewhere, I think 158, 200, 250, I don't even remember where it was. We find, found out that yes, some people do study online as well. Okay. So with that motivation, we started investigating further. And there are a bunch of researchers in the Microsoft Research Lab in India who essentially try to focus on this particular idea and study different things. They try to figure out with so many courses available online and good quality content available online from top professors all over the world, what does it really take to get students like you interested in learning online? So with that particular idea, we came out with this project called Massively Empowered Classrooms. So have any of you ever heard of Massively Empowered Classroom? Oh, some of you have. Have you ever taken a course there? No, okay, all right. So in the next five minutes, I'll talk more about Massively Empowered Classroom and tell you how can you actively participate because this coming semester, we are actually going to do something for all of you uh, in Rajasthan as well. So it's going to be very relevant to you as well. So essentially, with Massively Empowered Classrooms, we are trying to do just what I said in the last five, seven minutes. We are trying to build a system that puts together all the experiences that students typically anyways go through. So for example, you like to interact with your peers, you like to talk to people on Facebook, you like to, you know, merge, um, uh, mingle with people socially, you like to watch videos which are engaging, you want to interact with, you know, what's happening on the portal. And more interestingly, and most importantly, you want content that's really, really aligned to what you study in college, right? Because most of the students, when we were talking to them, they came back and said that even though these courses which are available online on these big platforms, big uh, MOOC providers, they are very good of top quality, but there are two main problems. One is the level of content is kind of high. It's very tough to interpret. And second is that it's not really aligned to your curriculum. So even though you, know, you have a lot of free time, but I'm sure a lot of you spend time doing the other three things, so you don't really care about studying online. So MEC, what does it do? Three main things. It's actually meant to be an ecosystem. It's not just about students. It's meant to be an ecosystem. That includes teachers, enables them to use quality content that you know, some top professors from India have already created and will be creating. It engages with you, students. It builds a, it, it's built around an ecosystem, as I said, where content is available, but it's very engaging, and it's something that you would like to see and do. And also help institutions improve the overall quality of education. So for example, if there's an institution who's facing dearth of quality faculty who can teach a particular course, MEC can actually be very useful in taking up that particular course and helping a new faculty ramp up and go and deliver. So this is not really new, but it's new for uh, you know, this part of the country. So we started with MEC around probably a year ago, in fact, exactly a year ago, and we have done three pilots so far. So when we started, we did the first pilot with the Vesvesaria Technological University, which is based out of Belgaum, and all the colleges in uh, Karnataka are actually affiliated to that university. So we rolled out this uh, content that we had on a course called the Design and Analysis of Algorithms. Is that course called the same here? Da or something? Da, okay, all right. You don't even know the full form of your course. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, so we rolled out this course. And uh, we saw some good results. A lot of students participated. A lot of students watched the videos. We learned a lot. And we actually went back, made some modifications, made some, you know, did some fine tuning, and came back. And the semester after that, we uh, rolled out two pilots, one with uh, the Gujarat Technical University, and uh, 
the other one with University of Pune. So all of these, you know, the reason we do it with universities is because what we are trying to do with MEC is align courses to your local curriculum. So all, as all of you would know, right, if the university has prescribed one particular syllabus, then generally what you typically do is you have your chapters arranged unit-wise and chapter-wise and, and so on and so forth. So that's essentially what we are trying to do as well. So now if you go to MEC, you will actually see that the content that's available for uh, design and analysis of algorithms course is absolutely aligned chapter-wise to the content and the course that you study in the class. So I'll actually do a quick video to show you, you know, how MEC works and how can you actually go and log in. So can you play the video, please? So this is actually a, a demo, so don't be disappointed. There's no sound. You will have to hear to me only. So uh, you open your browser, go to mecr.org. That's the site URL. This is how the page looks like. You can see multiple sections. You can see sign in there. You can see social media integration. So the first step is to actually sign in. To sign in, you just you can sign in using your Facebook, Twitter, Google, whatever handle you have. Once you sign into the portal, you'll again go back to the landing page, and you will see a lot of sections. So the first thing that you see is quick links, which basically has chapters or lessons which are most popular among students all across the country. So if students have been watching you know, different chapters uh, back and forth again and again, then those will appear in quick links. You go down, you click on your university, you will see a list of colleges. So whichever college you are from, you have to go ahead, select that college. It's very essential that you select your own college and not somebody else's because your faculty is also involved. So they will know who has enrolled. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but they will know. So you go, register, and this is how the course looks like. So as you can see, your course right now itself, this is the Rajasthan course, which is live on the site, and it's arranged as per units that you study in the classroom. You can skip, you can move on. If you, there's some concept that you already know, you don't really want to pay attention to, you can just go on and you know, do a fast forward on that. So essentially what this lets you do is watch quality content at your own pace, anytime, anywhere. So in fact, in future, we are also coming out uh, with a variant of Mac where you will have the ability to watch the videos offline as well. So you don't really need to log in and you know, be worried about uh, all these issues like internet and all that. So that is something in the pipeline in a couple of months you'll probably get to know. This has wide social integration. This has forums which are very active. So we have a lot of people, students, as well as faculty who keep on responding to questions that you have. But the main objective is to connect you to each other. So we really encourage students to answer questions from other students. And uh, in case it's beyond all of you, then there's faculty who intervenes and goes ahead and answers questions. So because we're trying to keep it short, uh, I don't really have, no, I'm not uh, showing you the social integration bit, but essentially whatever you do on Mac can actually go to Facebook and social media and vice versa. So if you do something around Mac on Facebook, it'll come here, it'll do something on Twitter, it'll, you know, again come back and appear on the Mac page. You will have a profile page, which I think is coming, it's loading. Don't worry, there are incentives also, we will talk about that. So these are the forums, and uh, we keep a very close watch on what's happening on the forums. So we want you to participate, be active on these forums, and actually go ahead and do stuff. There's a bunch of KCs, which we call a quiz. I mean, KC stands for knowledge checks, which are essentially quizzes, which are also available online on the tool. All you have to do is go, and from time to time, we specify a window when you actually have to go and complete a particular knowledge test. And based on that, there are incentives, which I will talk about once the demo is over. There's an FAQ page uh, that you can actually go through, browse through, just go run your eye over it. If there's any questions that you have which we will not be able to answer today, you can actually go ahead and do that. And obviously, there's an email that you can use to contact us. So, and you obviously need to sign out towards the end. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's done. Now, what's on offer, right? So I already mentioned. For now, we have a course that's aligned to VTU, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Rajasthan Technological University content uh, curriculum. I know there are some universities which don't follow the RTU curriculum, but they are, uh, from what I've heard, they are very close to what RTU teaches, so we can definitely include them as well. For now, uh, we only have RTU colleges, but we can work with other universities and have them listed as well. 
more courses are going to come. We are also working with other professors in you know, different parts of the country to include more courses that uh, may be very relevant to you and you would want to see. So those courses will also come very soon. And obviously, quizzes and other things to keep you incentivized and keep you engaged. The most interesting part, I kept this for the last because I knew you will lose interest by the time this slide comes. So what's, what are the incentives, right? So how many of you want certificates, by the way, for everything in life? OK, everybody. This section, you don't want certificates? Volunteers, please note, no tech attendance certificates also. OK? <laughs> All right. So uh, we have, uh, we are working again, we are exploring this and we are learning as, as the project is maturing. But uh, from what we have figured out so far with the, all the learnings we have had over the last one year, is that we have created an incentive model that has something to offer to everybody. So at an institute level, we are looking at partnering with institutes to run this project successfully in your campus and uh, to ensure that you know, there is a direct connect between us and your uh, campus, your faculty and students. Uh, for faculty members also, faculty members who are going to help us drive this initiative in, this, uh, in their classroom. Because as I said, uh, MEC is about students, faculty, and management together. So in fact, faculty have a huge role to play here. So not only can they use the content that is available, that is being uh, shipped from us as Microsoft Research, they can also add the content, which can be a PDF document, a Word document, a video file, or whatever, on top of whatever is available. And that goes out only to their students. So it's basically something that faculty have full control on, full flexibility on. They can go ahead and create their own quizzes. They can specify from what time to what time the quiz should be open and how many students have to take it, when do they take it. You can do all that as well. So faculty, we really encourage you to participate and be active. I mean, feel free to reach out to all of us in case there's something you want to you know, clarify on. And for students, obviously, lot of certifications, two types of certifications, and most importantly, potential research internship opportunities. So I will elaborate on the students bit, the two types of certificates we have to offer. The first one is a participation uh, certificate that any of you can get if you score 50% plus marks across the seven quizzes that will be available from uh, next f uh, 10th of February until probably end of April or first week of uh, May. So quizzes will be available. All you have to do is log in. Very short quizzes of five to six questions each. We encourage you not to cheat, not to take help from your friends, but obviously you will do that. That's OK for now. We have our ways of catching you, so we will do all that as well. But uh, those certificates you can go ahead and uh, you know, work for. Then there are completion certificates. If you score 70% plus marks across all the seven quizzes, so you can score zero in one and you really score high on the other one so that your average of scores is 70% plus. You get a completion certificate. And students who do really well, not only do they have an opportunity to earn another distinction certificate, they also have an opportunity of getting linked to a research internship opportunity at some premier research organization. So I'll elaborate on Research Connect in the next five minutes. That's why I will not really you know, touch on that right away. So that's about MEC. I hope uh, you guys uh, got some idea about what MEC is. MEC is available online. The website is mecr.org. The second initiative I'm going to talk about is called Research Connector. So Anandan briefly mentioned about it uh, in the talk uh, before this. And uh, the motivation behind uh, creating something like Research Connector was actually threefold. One was Whenever we went to colleges and we did events like Tech Vista and did workshops and seminars in different colleges and you know, did campus visits, we asked a lot of students that why, why do they not consider a career in research? So some answers we got, again, I think all of you would probably agree. Many of them came back and said they don't know what research is. They are clueless about research. There's no awareness. There's no way of you know, getting aware of what research is. They said there are no opportunities, so even if I know what research is, even if I know what's, what's the area I want to potentially work in, there is, there is no way I can actually go ahead and you know, really experience something real. And the third, there's no way to reach out to people. I mean, people hardly know what researchers do and who researchers are and how to connect with them and reach out to them. So with this motivation, we thought, obviously, we cannot do tech vista in every city every day. We have other things to do as well. So we thought we'll create something online that has a wider reach, and that's available to you again for any time, anywhere viewing. You can actually go ahead and view stuff, do stuff at your own pace, own leisure, and maybe you will have that spark with time and realize what you want to do and go get hooked up. So 
the site essentially uh, i don't have the site right now it's all available online you can all uh, log in right now during the lunch as well if you want it's www.researchconnector.net but as i said the site aims at answering those three questions that i had on my previous slide so one we want to create research awareness so by research how do we create research awareness we have videos of researchers talking about who they are what kind of work do they do you know what is going to happen next what the problems they are working on all these kind of things all these videos are available online we have sourced them from multiple sources and uh, we actually partnered with acm india as well then we want to connect you to real opportunities in research now this is very interesting right so how many of you look for projects and internship there we are okay so what do you do typically write random emails to whoever you know in the world and say okay i want an internship and project true false true okay see that was unanimous good so yes yeah, so that is again not something that happens only in jaipur or rajasthan that's true for the entire country anywhere you go to this is the answer you will get so we thought that in india again there are lot of good institutions there are lot of research organizations which work on some you know problems which are really important and researchers who are very well known can we do something to connect you to them and at the same time ensure that you get an opportunity to go and experience what they are doing and participate in the research that they are doing so research connector essentially lets you do that so the idea behind uh, the opportunities section in research, in research connector is listing down projects that we get from researchers from institutes like iits and professors in these colleges who are working on good problems great problems but they are looking at students from you know non iit kind of colleges to come help them and when i say help not that you know you have to go and buy vegetables for them but help means really participate in active research so we started this this initiative also a year ago actually we launched it at last last tech vista and then announced it uh, last tech vista and uh, over the last one year we have seen some great response so in terms of hits that we have had on the site we saw some 50k plus people visiting the site uh, over the course of last 7 8 months in terms of research opportunities because we started opening up to more colleges and more institutes and more iit professors uh, we had some 20 people from colleges which probably even none of us would know also from different parts of the country students from these colleges actually went ahead and applied for opportunities which are available online and uh, for every project opportunity there was an, on an average around 200 applications and the students who got selected went to that iit or that research organization spent like a month or two with these professors there came back later continued on the problem they were working on and ultimately lot of students have actually been able to publish papers in top conferences and doing very well so i don't have this so in terms of next steps just to summarize i promised you i'll be very quick and i will keep my promise in terms of next steps this is what you need to do for mecr that is massively empowered classroom you need to go to the website you have to select your college first of all select rtu find your college go enroll and take the quizzes on time so once you sign up for the course you will automatically start getting notifications and i encourage you to do it right away because the first quiz i think is going to start uh, as i said around 10th of february it's okay if you miss the first quiz but then it becomes tougher for you to score that 50% or 70% from the remaining quizzes so the earlier it is the better it is so go back and roll even if you don't watch videos today it's okay you can watch it over the weekend or whatever whenever you have time but do it the second one research connector url is researchconnector.net the site is actually self explanatory if you go there you will see different tabs projects opportunities and forums go ahead and feel free to do you know whatever questions you have ask people there are i think three four open positions right now two from iit bombay one from iit guwahati and one from uh, a world bank uh, funded center at pesit in bangalore so if you any of you are still looking for projects and opportunities and internships go ahead apply and you never know you may just get selected and be there so that's it uh, thank you and uh, i would back to vidya